welcome to those two chicks with a podcast it was rough we haven't done it in a while yeah yeah it, but I, hi i lost my train of thought um i'm nervous because we haven't done this in so long i know it's really been a long time actually it's almost been a month Mm-hmm. If you think about it, what's today? The 5th? We're only like six days off of it being a full month. Barely a week. Well, not barely a week. That's basically a week. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much a week. It's several days almost. <laughs> Seven days. Hi, guys. Um, It's been forever. Mm-hmm. We had... We didn't get to record in person last week. Mm-mm. Skipped our True Crime Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. I just needed a mental break, I Yeah, think. holidays and just so busy. Like, we were really... Because we were trying to batch yeah. episodes. Yeah. So we'd have enough time. Yeah. And I think we just exhausted ourselves in the process. We were kind of going ham in May. Yeah. Like, it didn't feel... It probably didn't feel like it to them. <laughs> probably because not. Because we had the same amount of episodes. But mm-hmm. it took so much for all the interviews for the Richard Hitchcock case... Mm-hmm. That was like a whole other time of recording for us. Yeah. So, and we did probably, how many did we do? Four, Four five, five. Yeah. Around there. All night, like, mm-hmm. until like 1130, just editing. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh, but no, poor Emma. to everyone else, it's probably just like a normal <laughs> I But there, that episode was so well done, like the editing, mm-hmm. that took a long time to do like the music and to cut it all right and to find the audio and, you Thank know. You. So I hope... I hope you guys appreciate <laughs> appreciate what Emma did. Um, yeah, I mean, let us know if you guys liked that. Yeah, I enjoyed just being in contact with the family and doing something where I felt like I don't know. I just felt like it was important to do, mm-hmm. but it definitely was different than what we're used to. Yeah, like I I I don't know. It was it was a different um a vibe all together filming yeah. and everything like that yes. i think it's because something we could do like once or twice a year yeah i think if we plan it out yeah far enough but yeah for sure just, just to do something to help too because i mean we're not just here just to laugh about shit right that is our favorite thing to do <laughs> yeah <laughs> um but yeah the case i have for you guys today um i don't know if we're gonna be laughing very often because it's kind of fucked up oh uh yeah and i want to do a content or a warning, mm-hmm. a disclaimer. Um, all of the above. All of it, because <laughs> there's violence against, obviously there's violence as a fucking murder, um, but minors. Um, it's graphic. There is rape, sexual assault. All of the worst of humanity is in this case, but it was a really interesting one, and I had never heard of this guy. Oh. And this was around the time where my parents were like, how old was my mom? Like 15. So, I mean, they were like. Oh, Okay. But, you know, they knew what was going on in the world around them. But my mom hadn't even heard of this. So I just thought that was interesting. I hate um, when it's with minors. I know. I, I mean, I hate with anybody. I'm not saying, like, there should, there's a great age to be murdered. But that's I know. not what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, I was probably about, like, 20 years old. <laughs> But it's little, it's not a little, it's little kid, just, yeah. but it's a minor. Yeah, and it's when graphic. you go, it's like, ugh. Oh. It's gross. It's, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just going to tell you guys, it's gross. This guy is gross. It's hard for me to even comprehend because I I think I that's where I'm at. Like, <laughs> I'm know? like, I don't, it just doesn't seem real, I guess. Yeah. But then you're like, no, it is. Um, a couple, but when it happened, I remember I had my therapy appointment the next day. I think I told oh. you. Yeah. I think I did. I was so distracted and like wound up that day and I didn't really mm-hmm. get why. And she's like, well, have you been watching the news? I'm like, well, yeah. And... I was like, but I don't know if that would affect me in my personal life because it wasn't me. Mm -hmm. And she's like, anyone in this country, especially a parent right now, you're going to get some type of like secondhand like trauma Mm -hmm. from hearing about this and watching the news. And I mean, I'm I'm not saying by any means like I'm truly affected. You know, I'm not trying to like make it about me. No, I'm just saying that um, especially those of us with kids going into public school... (sighs) I don't even know. I don't even know what to say because it was hard for me to get over it the first few days. Mm -hmm. Just talk out your feelings with somebody. Make a plan for your kid. I am buying my son something that can go in his backpack. And I don't know if that's beneficial because Mm -hmm. would he be able to grab it if something happened? You know, like how do you protect your child? Right. In a situation like that. No, and I think that's what I think other countries are seeing how real Mm -hmm. this is. I think 
TikTok has been really showing that because yeah. recently I found like some teachers that are showing hacks on how to keep your doors yeah. locked. And that's so sad because yeah. it's not like a look at this fun DIY. Yeah. It's like, no, this is actually serious yeah. if you need it. And they're doing it with their own money. Right. Teachers are buying things for their classroom to protect them from a school shooter with their own money. And mm-hmm. teachers aren't even paid properly as no. it is. And then people have the nerve to say, like, we need to arm our teachers. Mm-hmm. Like, they're, I, you know, I just don't think that we should be putting that on them. No. Obviously, may, I don't know. I don't know what the solution is. I don't either. I don't, and I don't think we're going to sit here and say, no. here's what we should do. No. But it's just, it's ridiculous. And I think it's just, yeah. we're at a point of, it doesn't matter what school you're at or mm-hmm. anything like that. I saw recently by us, I mean, graduation was recent. Yeah. For a lot of high schools, and I was working in graduation, yeah. and it did cross my mind. Yeah. Like, you know, is it going to happen here? Was it outside for you guys mm-hmm. this year? Honestly, how do you protect anybody? Right. And I know... Um, that stadium is so easy to access. Exactly. You know? You know, and you're just outside all day, and you're like, it could happen. Yeah. I think it's a lot of people's fear. And yeah. I know um, I give props to the Kalamazoo High School. Yeah. They hired, like, you. it was a long line. Yeah. But each person had to be, like, patted down, checked mm-hmm. before you got in there. There's yeah, security and everywhere. And it's so sad. You're going sad. to a high school graduation yeah. and there's a bunch of security. It's sad, but I think we're at the point where it's, like, it's happened so many fucking times. Mm-hmm. Do something. Be proactive. Be yeah. proactive. And that, that was kind of what, you know, I was trying to say, you know, if you are scared to send your kid to school – Go to the PTA meetings. Go to mm-hmm. the board of the school. See what they're doing. Um, I told Lucas, I'm like, I'm going to be that mom because I just want to know that my kid's safe. Mm-hmm. You know, I drive by their school and I notice that obviously there's playgrounds for the kids to play in. But also his school, they walk outside a lot. Like in mm-hmm. the little, there's like a front area where there's always kids walking outside with their teachers. How are you protecting them? Right. What What's the plan if something happens? Because I don't want my kid walking outside there if you don't have a way to protect them if something happens. Mm-hmm. You know? So I don't know. It's obviously you don't want to succumb to like the fear mongering. You can't live your life afraid. But I think that's right. why it's really important as a country that we need to become proactive and solve whatever's right. going on. And put an Be emphasis. aware of the situation instead of <laughs> yeah. just living in that, well, it's not going to happen here. Right, because it can happen can. anywhere. Yeah, we can't do that anymore. And this country mm-hmm. needs to be fucking proactive with mental health. Mm-hmm. It's not just a gun issue. It's not, you know, it's a mental health issue. Put, I don't know. No, that's <sighs> ridiculous. I, I just, I can't even imagine. I feel so terrible for those families. I know. No one ever deserves to go through something like that. And no. Sorry, guys. That was a really big Debbie Downer. And by the time people listen to it, I know it's not fresh anymore. But at the same time, let's not make this a Sandy Hook situation where people stop talking about it. Okay, well... <sighs> Now to get into more depressing stuff. I know. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've told them Tuesdays are the bummer days. That's true. So I'm glad we didn't there throw was, that in on Fridays. There was fair warning. Yes. Okay. I'm not going to tell you what the story is yet. Just you'll find out. I just don't want to oh, give okay. it away and be like, I oh, thought you were going to be like, guess. I'm like, I'm, no, no, you no, don't have to I'm, guess. I'm, I'm, guess. You're not going to be able to guess. <laughs> Literally, I've never heard of this guy. Well, okay. I guess I'll tell you. This is the story of the mid-Michigan Ted Bundy. Oh. I don't, never heard of that. Never heard of him either. So we're going to start our story in August of 1978 in Eaton County, Michigan. 14-year-old Lisa Gilbert was walking back into her home when she noticed a brown car out in her driveway. And now this vehicle wasn't familiar to her, but she wasn't too concerned because there had been like a lot of contractors working in her house. They were doing updates. It was just kind of normal for the family at the moment. When she walked in the front door, there was a young man just standing there Mm. and She, you know, said hi, and he looked at her, and he asked her if her father was home. She said no, and he instantly snatched her up and dragged her upstairs to the master bedroom. When they were in there, she was tied up, stripped, and violently raped. The man then grabbed a belt and started strangling her. But he was using such force that he actually, like, snapped the belt. And Mm. so he was trying to find something else to use. And at that moment, he heard the screen door slam shut downstairs. So he was like, oh, my God, who's that? He goes downstairs. And it was Lisa's 13-year-old brother, Randy. Next thing Randy knew, the man was behind him, holding him by the neck and sinking a knife into his chest. Mm. Isn't that horrible? And the man kept stabbing Randy as he dragged him up the stairs to the room where Lisa was struggling. She, you know, she was tied up. She was blindfolded. Um, But luckily, Lisa finally slipped free of her binding. 
bolted down the stairs and out the house to the street screaming for someone to come help. Mm -hmm. And thankfully, help came quick enough to save Randy's life, but this was just the beginning of police's investigation into the man who would become known as Mid-Michigan's Ted Bundy. Wow. That's crazy. (laughs) Isn't that nuts? I actually found this case because I was trying to find a Michigan survival story. Oh, okay. And I didn't even mean it in like a true crime sense. Like I was just trying to find a survival story and that's what came up and I'd never heard of this guy. Mm -hmm. What year is this? 1978. Okay. I'm trying to woo saw myself. I drank too much coffee. And I'm like... <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> trying to... <laughs> uh, and I haven't even drank the full thing. No. That's what this you need to switch to it. Me. You're right, you're right. Then that's your first thing you grab. Water. <laughs> so Don Miller was a 22-year-old student at Michigan State in East Lansing, Michigan. He was majoring in criminal justice, and he was engaged to 19-year-old Martha Sue Young, who was also studying at Michigan State. She was super pretty. Mm. So pretty. She was a French major. She loved what she was doing, had so much life. Just everything I read about her was great. And it seemed like the couple had everything going going for them until Martha ended their engagement on December 30th of 1976. Mm. When Martha Sue's mother asked her why she did this, she stated that Miller was a tad controlling as he didn't like to go out and see people, and Martha was super social. I mean, she's a 19-year-old girl in college. Like, she just wanted to go out and enjoy life, and Don was kind of like, eh. Mm -hmm. (laughs) He just was a homebody, Mm -hmm. um, super religious, like a religious fanatic, and she also said that he didn't care about his schoolwork and didn't care about getting a job in the future, whereas Martha was incredibly passionate about her studies. So although she broke things off, they decided to remain friends and had plans to spend New Year's Eve together. No one really knows what happened that night, but Martha Sue never came home. And at first, her mother thought, like, she's a college student, so she was like, oh, she's probably sleeping it off somewhere, partied a little too hard, but by the next day, she knew something was wrong she contacted police and of course police were really concerned because if you remember from one of the first cases that i covered michigan had just recovered from serial killer john norman collins oh Mm -hmm. oh yeah that is around that same it was like seven years prior yeah still fresh in people's minds Mm -hmm. and he targeted college-aged women um, mm. It was more so um, at U of M in Ann Arbor, just for non-Michigan people. I don't know how far away they are. They're not that far, though. No. Michigan and Michigan State, maybe like an hour or two. What? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're they're, they're they're not that far from each they're other. They're not that far. They're not super close. Like, they're the two biggest colleges in Michigan, so yeah. obviously people are going to know. Like, it, it was fresh in people's minds. We'll just yeah. say that. People. Okay. <laughs> I was trying to figure this out. Hmm, if I do this and I'm math- <laughs> mathing with your th- with your hand up in Michigan, he was over here and it's up here. It's like this far. It's about uh, <laughs> half of my pointer finger. <laughs> I don't know. It's not that far. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So they started their investigation with the person closest to Martha, her ex fiance Don Miller, which every freaking news article that I've read was like, her fiance, her fiance. She fucking broke up with him. Let's say ex-fiance, because this douchebag, just ex-fiance. I mean, yeah. They broke up. I don't know why that made me mad, because this guy (laughs) makes me mad. But it's like, you you literally just said they broke up. Why are you still calling her his fiance? That is kind of weird. They broke up. (laughs) And I just feel like he doesn't deserve that fucking title. I feel like it'd make it even more, like... I know this is so sad, but when some when someone goes missing or whatever, media mm-hmm. does like to, you yeah, know, embellish. make the, yeah. Yes. I feel like ex-fiance would be more like, ooh. Yeah. You know what it I mean? It would be. Yeah, I don't know why they, I don't know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Not like I'm a fucking research journalist. Well, I amazing. am. <laughs> <laughs> you guys didn't do your job right. <laughs> <laughs> oh god but anyway her ex fiance don Sorry. miller i had to clear my throat oh i didn't even hear you i was like about to choke oh don't my choke please i can't do the heimlich right now uh-uh. <laughs> i'd be like oh just I wouldn't let me go. <laughs> i probably would <laughs> ah, i'd just be standing running in circles while you're dying <laughs> dan oh he's not here oh i don't know what to do and then i'd probably have to poop because i'd be so nervous you're pooping while I'm dying. <laughs> while you're on the fucking floor dying. I'm like, I gotta do it. You just leave the door open. Emma. Emma, you better now. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. 
Oh God. Okay. Yeah, where were we? Oh yeah, I was ta- I was mad because. Yeah. Oh yeah, ex fiance. Ex fiance. Yeah. <laughs> I remember now. <laughs> okay, but they started their investigation with the person closest to Martha, her ex fiance Don Miller. Miller switched up his story multiple times while talking to the police, but they just didn't have enough to really pursue him. He was obviously a person of interest. They didn't have a body, and they wouldn't for a very long time. Things settled down as much as they could. Miller moved on. He graduated from college and got a job as a security guard. And then in October of 1977, so like 10 months later, things would ramp up again. Hunters discovered a set of clothing in another town we have talked about before. Bath Township. Oh. Isn't that crazy? Something's going over on that side of Michigan. I know, but I also, like, I was like, wow, we've covered, I mean, I know it's only two things, two similarities. But that's actually really exciting. Yeah, and I was like, oh my gosh, so people who have been listening to the podcast, you're going to know, mm-hmm. we've covered different things. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we did things. I mean, like, <laughs> that gets me, like, last episode, you said, I read this book. Yeah. <laughs> like, I read a book. I think my brain just goes so fast sometimes that I don't complete the <laughs> sentence that I'm meaning to say. And then I wrote, like, in my notes, I mean, I mean, I know Michigan isn't, like, a super huge place, but IDK, I thought that was interesting. <laughs> I was just, like, talking to myself in my notes. I just thought that was really funny. I love your notes. Oh, no. Oh, if anybody else ever has to read my script, like, Mary, <laughs> like, what the fuck is she talking about? There were numbers where there shouldn't be numbers. Oh, there was numbers. <laughs> So hunters found a set of clothing that were placed in such a way where it literally looked like the person who was wearing them just evaporated. Like the undergarments were still placed like properly in the clothing. Oh. Not just like bunched up or anything, like literally like laid out. Like they just like were gone. Isn't that weird? That's weird. I know. There's a bird. These were the clothes of Martha Sue Young. And unfortunately, mm-hmm. there was still no body, but it was obvious that there was foul play because her purse was nearby, too. It was just oh. obvious at this point. Now, Dan. Dan. <laughs> Dan! My poor husband. I know, I'm sorry. Don still lived his life as a free man for a year, and things kind of died down. And that was until June of 1978, when Marita Choquette, a 27-year-old editorial assistant, at a local news station went missing after she came home from having dinner with a friend. Mm. Her car was discovered in the parking lot of her work, but not in her usual spot. Like, she always had one certain spot she parked in. Co-workers and family, they knew something was wrong. Thirteen days later, her mutilated body was found in Okemos. Okemos. I always say that wrong. (laughs) Okemos, a town next to East Lansing where a farmer was dumping his trash. And it was brutal. And I'm not going to go into, like, full detail. She was sexually assaulted. Um, But I did want to point out that she was, her hands were cut off. And that was something that John Norman Collins had done. Yeah. So it never says, like, if this guy was trying to copy John Norman Collins. I'm sure he had heard of what happened. Inspiration from him. Yeah. Sure. I'm sure he'd heard. But, you know, they don't really talk about it. Of course, the state was on high alert again, especially Martha Sue's mother, who noticed striking similarities in appearance between Marita and her daughter. They were, like, same height, same weight, had, like, similar hair. They were very much alike. Um, But police didn't have much time before their next victim would be reported missing. That same month, when... Wendy Bush, a 21-year-old student who was enrolled at Michigan State, was found stabbed to death in a field near Holt, Michigan. I don't have too much information on her. I, I do have more information at the end of the story, but okay, that's all we really know about her. Um, six weeks later, another victim had been claimed. Christine Stewart, a 30-year-old married science teacher, went missing while walking on walking down the street in East Lansing. And this was just two days before the attack on Lisa Gilbert. So he Mm -hmm. really ramped things up. Mm -hmm. And as we know, the Gilbert siblings survived. Both had fairly short hospital stays, but they still fight to keep their attacker behind bars and they tell their story today. Mm. Um, So Miller was arrested shortly after the attack and confessed to all four killings. Authorities said that Miller managed to cover his tracks very well, um, but, you know, they caught him and he finally told... The true story of what happened to these poor women. He was such, he was just a really religious fanatic. Mm -hmm. And he would claim he like would hear voices and stuff, which he was deemed competent later. Okay. Um, He was just a creepy dude. And all these women that he murdered 
except for the attack on um, Lisa Gilbert, all the women before had rejected him in some way. So that's kind of what I'm going to go into right here. After begging Martha Sue to go out with him that night, Don Miller strangled her to death in his car when she told him she didn't love him anymore. So it's just a fucking asshole. <laughs> Just getting rejected. You're like, oh, I just need to murder these people because they don't want me. Yeah. Um, he strangled Marita in his car after taking her to breakfast one morning and then dumped her body in a field. So we don't know if this was like she went out to dinner, came home, and then went out with Don that morning. Was it during the night? I don't really know. I couldn't find it. But I did find that he said that's how he killed her. Wendy um, disappeared from her dorm at MSU um, he knew her because obviously she went to the same school and she was also very religious. Um, but again, she turned down his advances and he actually strangled her in the Spartan Stadium parking lot. And then, um, two months later, he was on his way home from work when he thought he spotted a ghost. The petite woman with wavy shoulder length brown hair and big dark rimmed glasses walking down the sidewalk near his home had to be Martha. Like, he mm-hmm. thought she looked so much like like her. Um, he ran her down with his car and then threw her into the back seat and began to strangle her, demanding to know how she was still alive. It obviously was not Martha Sue. It was um, Christine Stewart, who was actually a neighbor of his. So she was just walking down the street near their neighborhood. And he claimed he saw her as Martha Sue, and that's why he ran her down and strangled her. So... Hmm. Now, um, his boyish-looking face and mild manners um, earned him the title of Mid-Michigan's Ted Bundy after the famous serial killer who murdered 30 women mm-hmm. in the mid-1970s. Definitely didn't, like, look like... He looked like a creep, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? And, like, Ted Bundy was, like... I never thought he was good-looking, but that's what everyone said. Yeah. He always gave me the ick. But, yeah, so at his trial, Miller claimed that he was insane and suffering from multiple personality disorder, but he was deemed competent to stand trial. He only got a 10 to 15 year sentence after pleading guilty to a count of manslaughter in connection with slaying one of the women. So people were pissed. But he was also given 30 to 50 years after pleading guilty to raping an attempted murder of the Gilbert siblings. Okay. Um, But like I said, people were rightfully upset about his light sentence, and there were... um, so many opportunities of him to get parole luckily most got shut down until he had reached the minimum 30 year sentence for that um rape and assault or rape and attempted murder and he would have almost gotten parole that time Mm -hmm. if it had not been for um lawyers really looking into his past in the um prison system because he mostly had you know good behavior except for one instance in 1979 um where he was found with a weapon in his cell which was just like a cord that he could have strangled people with that was like he strangled people that was like his thing right um and luckily they could try him for that Oh. oh i'm sorry this was 1994 they could try him for that and got him an additional 20 to 40 year prison sentence so that kept him in jail hmm However, back in 2018, he was up for parole again. So basically, all these victims just have to keep coming back and saying, like, no, keep this asshole behind bars. And he's still there to this day. He is, I believe, 67 now. So hopefully Mm -hmm. we can keep him behind bars. But Michigan sentencing was really lenient back in the 70s. Why do you like get charged for one? Is that just because the evidence think they, they found? Find, on yeah, they couldn't oh, okay. find enough evidence um, to really link him because he covered up his tracks so well. Oh. So, yeah, that's the story of Don Miller. It's hard because there's not that much information about him. Like, people just don't know about those cases very much. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's no, just never heard of them. I know, right? It's crazy. Hmm. The Gilbert siblings, they did um, a show for AT and AT and T. That's not right. <laughs> AT- I don't know what it is. I'll find it. I'll link it in the show notes. Oh, okay. What is it? I don't know what you're talking about. Isn't there about. one that starts with an A? Well, AT&T is a phone company. Well, yeah, it's definitely not at and <laughs> And then I'm like, ATV? <laughs> That's a, a yeah. little righty thing. Um, but yeah, that was the story. I thought that was interesting. Oh, and he's... <laughs> I have to mention, too, I heard in one podcast, they said, it's really hard to find him, someone who's willing to, like, bunk with him, because he's so yeah. creepy. Like, people will, like, beg to get out of his room because he's just so creepy. Interesting. I know. I guess it's so weird that he's, like, still alive. I know. 
Well, it was only the 70s. Right. But I guess, like, a lot of these people, we always talk about, like, they either are dead or... Yeah. Well, it's... It, I guess the 70s do seem, like, so long ago. But, he, like, John Norman Collins, he was so young. Mm-hmm. You know, he was only 22, 23 when these murders happened. So, in the 70s, right. you know, we're... God, almost 50 years ago. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Remember when it's like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, the 70s were, like, 30 years ago. <laughs> And I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> They're 50 years ago. <laughs> I like how that makes it seem so old, but you're only 24. Right. Like, yeah. we had, like we were born in the 70s sometimes. Well, I mean, I'm about I... to be 26. <gasps> I'm so close to 30. Ew. Mm-hmm. I mean, grateful to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like every time I say something like that, I'm going to fucking jinx myself. And they're going to be like, okay, bitch, dead. You know? <laughs> Do that prime time of being murdered. Stop it. I am. Gosh. Hopefully that, that was good for you guys. Mm-hmm. I know I it lacked it information. Was... It was really hard to find info on this case. There's not even really... I found one podcast. Mm. And it is somebody who's local to Michigan. I'll put her podcast because or put her podcast in the show notes. Um, there you have it. Mm-hmm. I did the research for you guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Be grateful. Be grateful. <laughs> I did my best. All right. Cool, I think we're done. Yeah. Uh, we'll see you guys Friday. Mm-hmm. We have some fun stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how it's going to go. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye-bye.